All right, part two. So get outside. That's the first thing. Second thing, find something that you enjoy doing. I know when you're on the couch, you may feel like there's nothing you enjoy doing, but just pick something, something where you can get out and move. Working out is phenomenal because if you have a genuine imbalance in the chemistry of your brain, or even when you're upset, see, emotions are chemical. If you've never seen the movie, What the Bleep Do We Know, it is phenomenal, okay? Go see it. Get it at the library, rent it. You can find it online. Um, you can see it for free. It's great. And one of the things they talk about is how your emotions are chemical. See, a lot of times we talk about emotions like they're just sort of this etheric thing that just sort of you know, this wind that blows through all human life, but it's not. They are chemical, literal byproducts in your brain that can be measured and quantified and extracted. Even though we might debate what happiness feels like, from a neurochemistry point of view, you know, serotonin is serotonin. You know, I mean, things that make you feel good make you feel good. Endorphins are endorphins. So exercise, physical motion, will make you feel better, even if it's just a walk. Just go walk around the block. I'm not saying that you have to go and become a competitive power lifter or a gym rat or something like that, but I'm just saying just do something to get your blood flowing, okay? Be in motion. It's what human beings were meant to do. It's what we were designed to do. Like we've talked about, you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be creating. You're supposed to be working towards something, okay? Now, Part of that that comes along with the fact that your emotions are chemical comes the fact that you can get addicted to these feelings. Do you know anybody, and I know it's not you, but do you know anybody that's just negative all the time? That no matter what happens, they're mad? Remember we talked last time about somebody who wants chocolate ice cream but they get strawberry instead? Do you know somebody that would just be mad for the rest of the day about the fact that they got strawberry ice cream and didn't get chocolate? Right? See, those people, again, I know it's not you, but those people are actually addicted to those feelings. They are addicted to negativity. Their brain and physiology has started to expect these negative emotional responses. And I can prove it to you. I can give you a test right now of how positive or how negative you are. Okay? And I've mentioned this before, but. Maybe you're going to listen to me and start doing it now. I don't know. Fingers crossed, okay? Look into the mirror and say to yourself, you're great and I love you. If you can't say it out loud, that already should tell you something. But even say it silently. Look yourself in the eye. Here, look at me. Look in the eye. You're great and I love you. Okay? Does it make you feel weird when I say that to you? Now, if you're a guy, I can understand why, but you know what? I love you too, man, okay? And ladies, I love you, all right? But if you cannot do that, if you cannot look at yourself and say to yourself, I love you, that should tell you something. And it should tell you about the current state of your own emotional state and your own uh, addiction to that emotional state, okay? Now... Again, it's sort of a chicken or the egg type thing. A lot of people will say, oh, but when I have the relationship, I'll be happy. When I have the job, I'll be happy. When I have the new car, I'll be happy. But it is the exact opposite, okay? If you feel bad now, all you will attract is bad, okay? So you have to change now. You have to change your emotions now, okay? Again, I put up on examiner.com. How to make yourself feel happy instantly. It's up on Facebook also, on my uh, fan page and on my profile. Okay? So either one, you send me a friend request to be Dave Walters, or find me on Twitter, find me on MySpace, on, on my blog, blog.peacelovemoney.com, anything, and I'll help you out with it. Okay? But I will just say offhand, the easiest way to make yourself feel good is vividly imagine and vividly remember the last time that you felt really good. Okay? Now, Here's another thing. A lot of times, people that are depressed, it's because they don't know what's going to happen. I have someone I'm working with that this is a real problem for this person, okay? When they look into the future and they don't know what's about to happen, that fills them with anxiety. That fills them with fear. Here's the thing. That is a choice, okay? That is a choice you make, 
okay? When you look to the future and you don't know what's going to happen, you can just as likely be excited about the fact that you don't know what's going to happen. Just think of it that like God and the surprise in, in the universe are going to throw you a surprise party, okay? It's like I said, I believe I shared. Last week, I had a pretty big problem, a couple of really big problems that I had no idea how it was going to manifest, and I would have been well within rights to just be terrified about it. But I just looked at it. I was like, I know this is going to work. God's going to come through for me. The universe is going to deliver. Even I don't know what's going to happen. Let's find out. And it happened. And it manifested. And it came. And my problems were solved. But here is a dangerous thing that can happen to people. Okay? When you've got a problem and the solution comes to you, you get the blessing that you were praying for. Instead of being happy that that problem is solved, your mind instantly rolls to the next problem. You've got to be aware of that. You've got to stop that. That's why I did the gratitude video before this. When something happens that you want, when something good happens that you want, celebrate it. Celebrate it, celebrate it, celebrate it. Because when you just lay in the depression, when you just lay in the sadness, when you just lay in, oh, woe is me, that's all you're going to get is more of that. You understand? So you have to consciously choose to disrupt the pattern. You got two minds. You got the monkey mind that's all over the place that you have to rein in and make it into the horse mind. You have to do this. I can help you, but I cannot do it for you. Okay? It's like Buddha said. All complex things decay. Work out your own salvation with diligence. In the end, we all have to walk the path alone, okay? In the end, you came into this world by yourself. You will leave it and go to your judgment by yourself, okay? You have to do this. You have to decide. You have to make the choice. So the next time something happens that upsets you, the next time you feel yourself getting triggered by something, the next time... Uh, you feel the pangs of, you know, the old boyfriend or girlfriend that left you, take a step out of it. Just step out of it. Look at it like it's happening to someone else. Look at it like someone else was telling you this story, right? And just say, what is it about this situation that's bothering me so much, okay? Because in most of these relationships that I talk to people, the relationship was crappy anyway, right? You probably fought all the time. They probably weren't uplifting and loving and supporting you. And you may or may not have been uplifting and loving and supporting them. So if the relationship wasn't working, why are you upset about it now? Why are you continuing to mourn it now? When in reality, the...